and welcome to Indus News. Live from Islamabad, I'm Naila Shudra and these are the headlines. India has reported the world's highest single-day spike in COVID-19 cases with more than 314,000 infections. The country has also registered its record 2,104 fatalities in the past 24 hours. Pakistan has reported over 5,800 cases and 98 deaths overnight as the toll approaches 16,700. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 3 million lives and infected over 143 million people. At least four Syrian soldiers have been wounded in Israeli airstrikes on Syrian military targets near the capital, Damascus. Syrian army said the strikes also caused material damage, while most of the missiles were intercepted by its air defenses. Meanwhile, Israel army said that it attacked Syrian missile launcher and air defense systems after a missile attack near Dimona nuclear reactor. The UN's nuclear watchdog says Iran has installed extra advanced centrifuges at its underground facility. In a report, the International Atomic Energy Agency verified eight cascades of two different classes of centrifuges at the Natanz plant. Meanwhile, the European parties noted progress in the first two rounds of the talks but warned of major hurdles. In Russia, police have detained over 1,400 people as supporters of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny protested over his failing halt in jail. Earlier, the protesters, defying warnings, marched through the dozens of cities amid massive police presence. Meanwhile, the State Department said the U.S. and Russian officials discussed Washington sanctions over the poisoning of Navalny. And in football, Borussia Dortmund beat Union Berlin 2-0 to keep their hopes alive for next season's Champions League. Marco Ruiz and Rafael Guerrero scored one goal each to seal the win for Dortmund. Dortmund are in fifth place with 52 points, four behind fourth place Eintracht Frankfurt. For more news and details, stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. India has recorded the world's highest single-day spike in COVID-19 cases with more than 314,000 infections. The country has also registered its record 2,104 fatalities in the past 24 hours. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 3 million lives and infected over 143 million people. Amid the shortages and the adverse effects of vaccines, now bogus doses seem to be a new problem. U.S. drug maker Pfizer confirms that suspect doses of its vaccine that were seized in Mexico and Poland were fake. Reports say the doses were going for as much as $1,000 a shot. Meanwhile, the U.S. Drug Regulatory Authority has slammed unsanitary conditions at a Johnson & Johnson's vaccine production plant. The U.S. has also added at least 116 countries to its Level 4 Do Not Travel advisory list, citing very high COVID-19 cases. Down south, as Argentina crosses 60,000 COVID-19 deaths, authorities say the country is facing its worst moment of the pandemic. Argentina, está viviendo el peor. Argentina is going through the worst moment of the pandemic. Since the start of the pandemic, since March 3rd of last year, this is the riskiest time because even though we have a strong health system, even though we have health workers that are vaccinated, we have an increase in the number of cases. That threatens to overwhelm the health sector. And we have concerning strains circulating that raise the risk of infection and fatalities. International medical charity Doctors Without Borders has urged rich countries to stop blocking a patent waiver plan that could boost global vaccine production. This comes as India plunges into a tragedy of unprecedented proportions. 
with a staggering positivity rate of over 32 percent. A number of charities are helping the country's COVID-19 stricken population, which is facing a crisis of food scarcity as many cities remain under lockdown. The biggest problem people are facing this year is that the family members in a house are testing positive of COVID-19. So I believe it is the responsibility of Gurudwara's management committee to provide free food to positive patients and families who cannot cook food at their homes. The free meal services at the shrine are going on, but this is a separate food for the patients only. Meanwhile, Greece plans to start the rollout of Johnson & Johnson's vaccine on the 5th of May after EU's drug regulator backed its use. In Pakistan, 98 more people have lost their lives to COVID-19 in the past 24 hours. The health ministry says the countrywide death tally is now approaching 16,700. The ministry said more than 5,800 people tested positive for the virus overnight. It said the positivity rate is 10.16 percent. The caseload has crossed 778,000, of which more than 676,000 people have recovered. Officials say there are nearly 85,000 active cases in the country, while more than 5,400 of them are critical. At least four Syrian soldiers have been wounded in Israeli airstrikes on Syrian military targets near the capital, Damascus. The Syrian army said the strikes also caused material damage, while most of the missiles were intercepted by its air defenses. Earlier, the Israeli army said it hit a Syrian missile launcher and air defense systems after a missile attacked near its Dimona nuclear reactor. An Israeli military spokesperson said the Syrian missile was fired at Israeli aircraft, but it overshot the target and landed in the Dimona area. The explosion near Tel Aviv's secretive nuclear facility also triggered warning sirens. The UN's nuclear watchdog says Iran has installed extra advanced centrifuges at its underground facility. This comes as world powers are engaged in talks in Vienna to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. In a report, the International Atomic Energy Agency verified eight cascades of two different classes of centrifuges at the Natanz plant. Earlier, the European parties noted progress in the first two rounds of the talks, but warned of major hurdles. The diplomats also condemned escalatory measures by any actor that could jeopardize the progress. Meanwhile, Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps released drone footage of the U.S. aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. Arab coalition in Yemen says it has intercepted and downed an explosive Latin Houthi drone over southern Saudi Arabia. In a statement, Saudi state media said the drone fired towards Hamas Mushahid. Meanwhile, Houthis claim they attacked King Khalid Air Base in Hamas Mushahid. A spokesperson for Yemeni rebels said the drone hit an important military site accurately. The Houthis have kept up regular cross-border attacks on Saudi Arabia and a ground offensive in Yemen's Marib region. Earlier, U.S. envoy to Yemen said the battle for gas-rich Marib is the biggest threat to peace efforts. In Russia, police have detained over 1,400 people as supporters of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny protested over his failing health in jail. Earlier, the protesters defying warnings marched through the dozens of cities amid massive police presence. Protesters in central Moscow demanded authorities free Nalvani and let the doctors see him. Critic's wife, Yulia Nalvania, also joined the rally in the capital, where demonstrators chanted her name. Russians in France rallied in front of the Paris City Hall, calling for Nalvani's immediate release. In the UK, hundreds gathered outside the Russian embassy in London to express support for the jailed leader. Meanwhile, the State Department said U.S. and Russian officials discussed Washington sanctions over the poisoning of Nalvani. In a briefing, spokesperson Ned Price said discussions over Russia's response to the curbs will continue in the coming days. In Pakistan, five people have been killed and 11 others injured in an explosion in the southwestern province of Balochistan. Prime Minister Amran Khan has strongly denounced the blast and direct interior ministry to investigate the incident. The blast took place in the parking lot of a luxury hotel in the provincial capital, Quetta. Police said initial investigation reveals the explosive device was apparently fitted in a vehicle. 
Bomb Disposal Unit says at least 50 kilograms of explosives were used in the bomb. A banned terrorist group, Tehrik-e Taliban Pakistan, has claimed responsibility for the blast. In a statement, TTP said they carried out the suicide attack using an explosive-filled car. Pakistan and Iran have agreed to enhance cooperation on Afghanistan, Palestine and the fight against anti-Muslim bigotry. This comes after Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi met Iranian counterpart Javad Zarif in Tehran. Pakistan's Foreign Office says they held delegation-level talks on a range of bilateral and regional issues. It said the two ministers signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of border sustenance marketplaces. It added the MOU will help the economic uplift of local populations on both sides. The office said the foreign ministers appreciated the opening of Mund Bishan border crossing point between the two countries. It added Qureshi also appreciated Iran's consistent support on the right to self-determination for the Kashmiri people. A U.S. Commission on Religious Freedom has recommended for a second time that India be placed on a blacklist over its treatment of minorities. In its annual report, the commission said the situation of religious freedom in India has deteriorated further. It added that Narendra Modi's government promoted Hindu national policies resulting in systemic violations of rights. The commission pointed to police complicity in violence against Muslims during the deadly New Delhi riots. This is the second year in a row that the commission called on the State Department to designate India as a country of particular concern. The United States says it has seen no evidence of a withdrawal of Eritrean troops from Ethiopia's Tigray region. Earlier, Eritrea had given assurances that they would pull out their forces from the region. At a press briefing, State Department spokesperson Ned Price urged an immediate and full withdrawal of Eritrean troops. Price said Washington believes that the withdrawal is critical to restoring peace and security in the war-torn region. Talking about Chad, he said the U.S. is gravely concerned over violence following the death of President Idris Debai. The spokesperson said the U.S. wants to see a peaceful transition of power to a civilian-led government. He noted Washington would be concerned by anything that stands in the way of a democratic transition of power in Chad. In the U.S. state of North Carolina, police shot dead a black man in his car while serving him with a search warrant. State officials say they have opened investigation into the incident. Protesters took to the streets following the shooting in Elizabeth City near North Carolina's coastal border with Virginia. At a news conference, Pascotank County Sheriff Tommy Wooten said the officer who fired the gun has been placed on administrative leave. This comes a day after former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin's conviction in the George Floyd murder trial. It's now time for a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The heads of state of over 40 countries are participating in the Earth Day Summit today. Hosted by U.S. President Joe Biden, the virtual event aims to discuss ways to tackle climate change. The two-day Earth Summit aims to revitalize climate action ahead of the COP26 gathering planned for Glasgow, Scotland in November. It also aims to revive the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. U.S. President Joe Biden is also expected to unveil a target to cut emissions by roughly 50 percent by 2030 from 2005 levels. President Vladimir Putin has expressed resolve for Russian greenhouse gas emissions to be lower than the EU by 2030. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison is likely to share his $436.5 million plan to co-fund research and pilot projects in green technologies. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will urge countries to match the UK's target to deliver net zero carbon emissions by the middle of the century to control global warming. World leaders are expected to keep twisting Brazil's arm to crack down on deforestation in the Amazon region. NASA says its Perseverance rover has extracted the first sample of oxygen from Mars. 
The six-wheeled robot converted a sample off the planet's carbon dioxide into oxygen through an instrument aboard the rover. NASA says the conversion can open up possibilities for future experimentation towards the goal of human life on Mars. In a press release, it termed the conversion quite modest at 5 grams, equivalent to 10 minutes of breathable oxygen. According to NASA, the red planet's atmosphere comprises 96 percent of carbon dioxide. A new Dutch research into the movement of dinosaurs has revealed that keeping up with a Tyrannosaurus rex was not difficult. The study says that unlike the popular movie Incarnations, the giant meat-eating beast most likely ambled around at human walking speed. A latest Dutch research indicates that the idea of time traveling back to the era of the Tyrannosaurus rex may not be that bad. Through a computer, reconstructions of muscles and ligaments on a three-dimensional model of Trix, a female T-Rex skeleton. Dutch researcher Pasha van Bichlert has concluded a shocking yet relieving finding that the dinosaur's preferred speed was most likely 4.61 kilometers per hour. It is close to the walking speed of humans and horses. Bichlert and his co-researchers say the T-Rex's huge tail played an important part in its locomotion. We've just published a paper in which we estimate Trix's preferred walking speed. We did this based on the reconstruction of the tail, and you just have to look at the tail to understand how important it is for its walking. It's more than half of its length. The walking of dinosaurs was unique because of its tail. There's no animal alive that uses the tail in the same way. By calculating the natural frequency of the dinosaur's tail, the researchers were able to conclude its step rhythm and from that, its walking speed. However, it is too soon to assume that a human could have outrun a T-Rex. Researchers say they are still exploring its possible top speeds. So the entire tail, by our reconstruction, almost a thousand kilos, was really just a mass supported by a rubber band. And with every step, it would slightly bounce up and down. But you can see that if I choose the wrong rhythm, it costs a lot of effort for very little result. Whereas if I choose the correct rhythm, I suddenly get a lot of movement for very little effort. That's resonance. So if T-Rex chooses the correct step frequency, the tail movements will be maximal. This maximizes energy storage and therefore walking efficiency. Meanwhile, scientists have discovered the remains of a previously unknown species of dinosaurs in the world's driest desert, Parshid Atacama, located in Chile. The plant-eating dinosaur lived millions of years ago among the lush greenery in what is now a moonscape of rock and sand. Most Asian shares are trading higher as investors ride the positive sentiment of overnight gains at the Wall Street. After sliding for the past two days, Japan's Nikkei 225 is leading the gains, rallying over 2 percent. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index and Australia's ASX 200 have also added over half a percent each. Seoul's Kospi has edged up marginally as well. However, stocks in mainland China have dipped fractionally under the flat line. In football, Borussia Dortmund beat Union Berlin 2-0 to keep their hopes alive for next season's Champions League. Dortmund are in fifth place in the Bundesliga with 52 points, four behind fourth-placed Eintracht Frankfurt. Marco Reyes and Rafael Guerrero scored one goal each to seal the win for Dortmund in the German Bundesliga. Meanwhile, Real Madrid have reclaimed the top spot in the Spanish La Liga by beating Cadiz 3-0. Star striker Karim Benzema scored a brace and provided the assist for Alvaro Odriozola to head in. Real are now level with second place Atletico Madrid on 70 points, but top due to better head-to-head -head record. 
In the English Premier League, leaders Manchester City defeated Aston Villa 2-1 to go to 11 points clear atop the league standing. Phil Folden and Rodri netted one each to move City a step closer to claiming their Premier League title. In another fixture, Tottenham Hotspurs ascended to sixth place with a 2-1 win over Southampton. The Spurs now sit on 53 points, just two outside the top four. Elsewhere, Juventus came from behind down to Parma 3-1 in their Serie A encounter. The win lifts Juve to third place with 65 points, one behind second-placed AC Milan, who suffered a shock 2-1 defeat to Sassuolo. It's now time to take a look at the weather around the world. For the latest news updates, you can follow us on our social media at indus.news.